Wanted to do a quick video on the Chinese diesel heater. Not a lot of videos out there cover wall mounting this and exhausting it out the side of a trailer or a van. Everybody talks about putting it through the floor. I did not want that. I didn't want it for a few reasons. One, this trailer is completely line X the floor and the walls. I didn't want to lose the space. And two, I didn't want somebody banging into it. So a wall mount of this was pretty simple actually. Just took some flat stock, 20 inch wide flat stock. The trailer's got 16 inch center studs, not a big deal. Bet them in the brake. Line X the shelves, 45 to corner, so you don't get any sharp edges when you walk into them. Covered some of the basics that everybody knows needs to be done on these. On the right there, I've got a master turn off coming off the back of that heater. Anytime I want, I could just turn this on and off. Saves it from pulling power because that LED display is always on. Mounted a second battery above it on the shelf. On the side of that battery, I ended up putting a battery charger. Just so I can look in the trailer when it's charging, see what I'm doing. Everyone says you gotta have voltmeter on this, so I ended up putting a system on this. I got I can read the volts on that battery. At the same time, I added USB and SIG plugs, so we kind of got everything covered right there. Talk about the intake for the air. Got the upgraded air intake, which everybody knows you need. I am pulling air two different ways, or I can pull air two different ways on this. I can pull air from outside. The first way is that flange mount is on the inside wall, but it does not go through to the outside of the trailer. It's sucking air from the pass-through for the air from the outside of the trailer. I'll show you that in a minute. Or I could turn the outside air off and I could pull air from inside the trailer on that one. I know there's a lot of debate back and forth which way is better. I don't sleep in this. We just use it for heat. So on the off chance that something happens with the outside air, I figure best of both worlds. As far as the exhaust goes, we took a four inch hole saw, punched it through the wall, both walls inside and out. Took an eight inch plate, had it line X, put an inch and a half hole in it big enough for the exhaust. I'm using the marine exhaust on this. We'll talk about this in a second. Cut that pipe, well, if anybody knows, it's very hard to get back on a flange. It can be done. A couple guys didn't think it could online. It can, you gotta grind a little bit of the flange off to get that pipe to fit back over. And I had to go to the local store and get a one inch pipe expander to open that pipe up a little bit once I cut it down. And that's a GM catalytic U-bolt made for GM cars on catalytic exhausts. It works perfect. Doesn't leak at all, I've tested it. Also rubber washered this thing down to the shelf just to help it with the vibration a little bit. I had a whole exhaust built for this, for the air. I didn't like it, it came down the side here. I just ended up going to Advance Auto and buying a nice coupler for this for an air intake hose for some kind of vehicle. This is nice now because I can turn this up and down. I want to turn it down. If I want to turn it up with winter, I can turn it up and I can shoot the heat out of it up. It, it's perfect. It works great. Uh, also did 110 power this year, which was a one of the things we wanted to do. I got that battery charger right in there. Plugs right in. I'll show you the outside and then it goes down to the outside. Just plug the extension cord in the outside, we put a pass through it and, and you're good to go. Actually you're running two batteries on this trailer. We had a battery before over in that cabinet for my lights and we connected it through a switch. So if I wanna run two batteries, two deep cycles, I can make them dedicated or I can just run this battery direct if I want. Probably just gonna leave both running because we leave both charging all the time, but it's nice if I didn't want to. Show you a quick picture of the trailer. This trailer's 22 feet, so I'm standing in the front. Right now we only got two sleds in here, but obviously when we get three, four sleds in here, it gets a little full. I did not want that heater on the floor. I wanted it up out of the way. This was kind of the best spot we thought. Really couldn't go anywhere else. I had the other cabinet and the spare tire on here, and we had our Neo cabinets up in the front. So there really was nowhere else to go with it. Just got two sleds in here right now. We got the Indy Evo up here. For all my guys up at Old Forge, already got the trail permit for this year, you can see that. And we got our 900 Ace in, uh, one of the two. Sitting here all ready to go, just waiting for snow. Show you the outside real quick, the exhaust flange, what we did. Kind of the same thing on the outside of the trailer, just took an eight, in, eight inch plate, welded over the welded over a flange on the top just to stop it from the air and the water and everything from getting in there. And then like I said, we used that marine exhaust in the middle, which has worked fantastic. You can literally touch this thing after running for hours and this is not hot at all. This is actually the second time we did this. The first time we put a flange over this, it got extremely hot. The outside flange originally, the first one was line X and it got so hot it actually melted the line X off. So it's kind of a learning curve, which is why I did a video too. I figure somebody else out there must be trying to wall mount it. At the same time, we put the pass through in this year, which is, th this thing was like $25 on Amazon. It's so nice, you just unplug it. 
and put the cap back on it and you're done. Or if I want to charge the batteries up, I just come back out, put it in. This was a piece of cake. Drilled the whole fort, connected at the back of the electrical box on the inside, ran it around. Just as an added bonus this year, something else we couldn't find. Couldn't find any way to mount a radio. We wanted AM FM radio in this trailer. Ended up using a marine mount on the side of the batter on the toolbox we already had. This thing's awesome. It's hidden. It's up there. It's kind of the same idea. I didn't want phantom watts or pulling power, so we ended up putting it on a switch. So this way, if I want to turn, turn, turn it off so it's not drawing any power, I can turn it off, put the cover down, I'm done. We also did gauges for our aux battery that was in here originally and the breakaway battery. I can check these anytime I want and see what kind of power is in them. We did that actually last year, put the radio in this year. Put a power outlet in there as well. Something else we wanted, we wanted lights in the cabinets. I ended up putting lights in our needle cabinets, which really is nice. You just come in there and now you can see what you're doing. Anybody's got any comments, questions, concerns on the Chinese dealers? Oh, I forgot. The air intake. So here's my pass-through from the outside for the air. We ended up taking just a drill and drilling a couple holes in the top of that air intake. So when that heater's pulling air, it's pulling it from that wall cavity, which is actually getting it from the outside of the trailer from this. So water can't get in there because the way anybody knows that air intake's shielded, and it's the best of both worlds. Put a power outlet in the front. That's the one that the Chinese or the electrical pipe ass plugs into this one. And then we just run one on the back just in case we want to have another charger in here. Kind of got sick of putting it through the floor or the, the extension cord through the door. It's a pain in the ass. Anybody that's ever not done it realizes this is just in case. Do a quick view of the back of the trailer here just so you can see how much room this has got. So this is 20, this is our 22 foot lightning enclosed. Here I am at the back of the trailer. I got one sled in there, obviously I got two, like I said. I'm still waiting on one more. We're hoping next week or the week after, kind of in the same boat everybody else is in. Anybody's got any questions or comments on it, please let me know. Uh, it's kind of a long process getting this right. Trial and error kind of thing, especially with that exhaust vent, but I, I think we got it right now. And uh, so far it works incredible, I can't believe it. What's next? Probably an auxiliary diesel tank, I can already see that. We've just been running it an hour or two a day messing around with it. Next year, we're probably going to mount a tank somewhere up here and, you know, somewhere on the wall just to keep it so we don't have to fill it up as much. But we're looking forward to using it. I use it. It works incredible. I, I can't believe how well that little heater works. Thanks for looking.